Hey guys, AFT Plumbing here, and today I'm gonna make a video of how my flushometer setup works. So, a lot of people have been requesting me to make a video on this, so why not? So, yeah, this setup's a lot different than the ones you've seen before. And uh, before I start this video, huge shout out to BTR Plumbing for guiding me through building this entire setup. He's a really good friend of mine, and he has a really awesome channel, and Please go subscribe to his channel. His link for this channel will be in the description below. He guided me how to build all this, and I don't think I would be able to build this without his help, at least not as good. So, yeah, that's on to the video. So, yeah, where I've added something else to the flush holder sub. So, I added a tank toilet because, you know, I had a sump pump before, but that would cause a lot of issues because when I would put, you know, the hose inside the tank, it would when the, I mean, the tank was completely empty, bone dry, it would spray and cause a lot of mess. And I did not like that. And it kind of did some damage. So no more of that. And I got this right here. I kind of did this. So this bowl of valve is right here. And yeah, this basically, you turn it on, it lets water into the tank, turn it off, it lets water out of it turns it off so yeah anyways on to the flushometer this is the most interesting part so how the flushometer setup works is there's a well pump right here instead of a garden hose and this is to reuse the water and it doesn't waste the water and i have a check valve right there and you can see it's at it's at about 60 psi like 59 psi and that's just enough to power these two toilets and there's a pressure tank right here so yeah, it's a 14 gallon pressure tank. I had this for almost a year now. I never used it in the beginning, but I kind of used it in the summertime a little bit. But now it's back in full effect. And I did replace the pipe right here because I literally used the gas line pipe and that made the water all rusty. There's some, you know, some like, it's kind of mucky a little bit, but it isn't as bad as it was before because it's not, a, it's the rust is out of there, so. Yeah, this pipe is brand new, just added that. So here's basically a more how it works. So you can see right here, the pump right here, you would see these in basements or outside houses. These usually are used for a well. So this is basically under here where this bin is, is where all the water sits. I turn on the pump, it's usually always plugged in because it's supposed to be like that. It sucks the water in like a vacuum for here. And there's a check valve to hold the water in because if the check valve wasn't there, the water would want to come back out into the sips and then go back in. So that, that's the reason why that's there. And it would suck this in, goes into here. There's a big fan in here that would spin it and it would, go up in here, feed for the pressure tank, and it would go all the way up into here and it would feed for the toilet. So anyways, I'm gonna give some flushes the Madeira and I'm gonna do this too. So here's the Madeira and it's on full pressure too. You can see the flushometer or hissed a little bit, like it is isn't an actual bathroom, which I actually really like. and. It's definitely a lot more interesting. I mean, the toilet's not interesting at all, but it's fun to do tests with. And the tank, the pump doesn't come on until you flush it again. So yeah, I'm going to flush the conserver now. And this is being filled up with a regular uh, toilet fill valve. So here's a flush from the conserver. <laughs> And I didn't turn the water on, but this would usually be on. I'm just turn it like this, and this comes on. Don't mind the bubbles, that's just some water. I don't know what to call that, but that's what happens when you reuse water. It doesn't bother me, but yeah, as you can see, it's filling back up like a regular toilet tank would. I don't have the, if I turn the fill on, it makes, it'll make it way more slower, obviously. And there goes the pump. So this just puts, it feeds the water back into, you know, the tank. And right when the tank's full, it shuts off. So yeah. Turn that off to make it faster. 
and it turned off again. And you can see the tank is filling. And I'll give another flush of Madeira too. If I can find a rent, uh, I can't find a screwdriver. Just might as well give it another flush. <laughs> And this right here would shut off. And it shut off. Let's flush it. Yeah, it's filling up like an actual toilet, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, that's pretty much it on the flushometer setup. I mean, there's really nothing else to show here. But I will be making videos of, you know, more tank toilets on flushometer. And I am getting some new flushometer toilets soon, so I definitely have more than the Madeira. And I will, uh, sorry for the mess back here, but I will be doing the Kingston soon. You can see, there's the Kingston. We'll be doing that and soon. I just gotta find a way, a way to uh, get this carrier set up back mounted on to here. But that's gonna have to wait for now because I've... You know, this pump can be plugged in and, out, in and out all the time because these are designed to be stayed plugged in. And if they're not, uh, you know, if they're always plugged in and out, it would burn the pump up. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video of the documentary on the flushometer setup. Plus, it's not really called a flushometer setup anymore. It's called flushometer and tank toilet setup. So, it's dual basically, but... I basically have only a tank line right there. I might, in the future, I might put a T right here and make it so I can put two flushometer toilets on here, but I don't have another floor mount flushometer toilet, but I do have a Kingston, but you know, I would wait for that. That's, that's gonna have to wait again. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did like to subscribe, leave a comment down below. See you on the next video, bye. <laughs>